الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد after praising the Almighty سبحانه وتعالى and passing salutation upon his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم I'm starting a topic which I have never dealt with well in set of uh, a book but always it's in our lectures all the time something that I haven't really done for the past more than 24 years in my career in this country and it's a new topic, but it's something that I normally say in my lectures. But there is no topic where it has been designated for this. And that is a name which I chose, which will be directed or directly linked to the topic itself. Can I just ask for that? Let me switch off. It's getting really hot now. Yeah, don't need it. why I chose to be a Salafi. Title, maybe some of you would say, first of all, who said we should call ourselves a Salafi? A title would say that, isn't it the same like the other ones who say that I am such and such party, I belong to such and such Aqidah, Person is called Davendi, person calls Brailwi, person called Ash'ari, person called Maturidi. There is lots of people at the moment, whether it's in the past or in the current time. So we chose this topic in order, number one, that those people who are upon the correct Aqidah and they want to save themselves from drifting from that path, is to be immunized. So this is an immunization for those who want to reach the haq or upon the haq and they're scared. Number two, there are people who do not know how to deal or how to tackle or how to speak to those who are deviant. So you'll find them uh, somehow falling into the trap by listening to people whom they're not supposed to listen. It's either because those people speak very well, dressed up very well, they've got lots of followers on the YouTube, they call them YouTubers, I don't call them dua. So they are YouTubers, people who are, if you genuinely ask me who are they, are, they are just basically ignorant people followed by ignorant, ignorant dua followed by ignorant people. And those are very dangerous. These people are putting our da'wah Hundreds of years behind. We're trying to progress in our da'wah. But those ones, they come and they put those people so far away from the people of knowledge. See, if I was a person who is rolling my sleeve backwards here, got some hair tied up at the back, a pony, tail, or maybe with a special shave, with a special turban, and putting like an act, like a show, they'll find lots of people following. Lots of, you are very few. They'll find, mashallah, full masjid. And all of them following a person who is not even knowledgeable. Yesterday we had a discussion, me and another person who was knowledgeable, against somebody who is not knowledgeable. And he was talking about the issues he's asking me between Ali radiallahu anhu and Muawiyah. So when he asked that question, and by the way, he's a learned person, Meaning that he is, you know, like doctors and engineers. In terms of dunya, he is on the top. So, because he doesn't know whom to he listen to, he's almost cursing Muawiyah without him knowing. Almost. Why? Muawiyah is after the Khilafah. When he spoke the first words, we knew straight away whom he's listening to. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want people now with the curiosity going. Google him out and end up you gone being as well from the Shubuhat. You listen to such and such. He said, yes. Well, how did you know that he is a knowledgeable person? You are an engineer. And we know you. We know your credentials. We know that you've been graduated. We know you're in that profession. If I want to build a house, do I go to a, a carpenter? When I build a house, do I go to a person who sweeps the floor? If I want to go to the house, do I go to a sheikh? I want to go to you because you're an engineer. Same with the deen. 
if you want to know my religion, I want to know a person who's knowledgeable in the deen. That person you listen to, who gave him the credit that you listen to? Is it because he's nice looking? Is it because he got lots of followers, lots of clicks? Is it because he speaks powerfully? What does that mean? It's knowledgeable for you to listen. Then he said, and I said, let me now explain to you what is the situation. And I'm going to as well explain to you. He said to me, oh, Yaki, I am open-minded. I said to him, I don't want you to be open-minded. I want you to be closed-minded. Open-minded means I listen to everybody. No, no, I want you to be closed-minded. You only listen to the person whom is correct. Just like you have a heart disease. Do you go to a half doctor? Doctor maybe knows something, doesn't know something. Well, you go to somebody who is known to be a good doctor. So this half doctor gave you a tablet to swallow. Would you swallow it? No way. You're not going to put your life at stake. Because this guy is not really that good. I'm going to have a second opinion. True or not? SubhanAllah, when it comes to the deen, he doesn't have a second opinion. He nice. He speaks nice. Let me talk, take from him. All the scholars, they said, what this Imam Ibn Sirin had said, Inna ilma deen. And this is the first thing that Imam and Nawawi started his book, Sharh Sahih al-Imam Muslim. Muslim. He quoted this, قَالْ إِنَّ ilma deen. This knowledge that you're taking is deen. فَانْظُرْ عَمَّنْ تَأْخُذْ See whom you are taking your knowledge from. You can't just take your knowledge from a person because he dressed up in an Arabic gab, he's got mashallah scarf and speaks very well. Don't take knowledge from those people who got an ear, you know, like a picture, they got 30 scholars, mashallah. 30 scholars. And he is one of them. And I saw that this image, including myself, I am a scholar. SubhanAllah. If these people deem me to be a scholar, I don't know about these guys who are next to me. Look at this. Khwani, scholar is a scholar. Person who spent his life in the knowledge. Us. Small students of knowledge. Small. Oh, God forgive me. I'm calling myself student of knowledge. Scholars, Ya Khwani, it's not just a scholar because he speaks nicely. Or speak powerfully. This person, he had said, and God treat him with his justice, said, that if I was in the army of Ali Nabi Talib, I would kill everybody in the army of Muawiyah Nabi Sufyan. So I said to him, when he quoted his words, I said to the person, then you are maybe better than Al-Hasan. Hasan didn't do like this. Hasan, he stepped down from Muawiyah. So which one is better? You or Hasan? If you're going to say Hasan, step down to somebody who's no good, I mean, Hasan is no good. So if the Hasan stepped down to somebody whom he believes he can lead, then are you better than Al-Hasan, the son of Ali, radiallahu anhu? Subhanallah. Knock out. So let's just now build foundations, qawaid, for us to be why this called so called Salafi and why I need to attribute myself to it. Why do I need to follow that path? And Salafi, Ikhwani, is the word Salafi that means attributed to the word Salaf. A Salaf means the predecessors. The predecessors here, which meant is the righteous predecessors whom the Prophet of Allah had praised and before that whom Allah had praised. Qala Allah, Allah said, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ Those three first predecessors from the immigrant muhajirun, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, muhajirun, immigrated from Mecca to Medina. وَالْأَنصَارِ Ansar, the inhabitants of Medina who gave aid to those who had migrated to them. Those are the ones Allah said, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ And those who followed them, 100%. Ihsan means 100%. Didn't pick and choose. Choose and pick. No. 100%. The Ihsan means the ultimate. رضي الله عنهم ورضوا Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with what Allah prepared for them. وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارِ And Allah prepared for them Gardens underneath which rivers flow. To dwell therein forever, and this is the supreme success. Why do I need to treat, sorry, to try another route when the route is set for me? 
I need just to follow the Ansar, the Muhajirun, those companions, and I've got Jannah. And Allah is pleased with me. And Allah prepared for me a nice Jannah for me. So if I said to you, this is the route to lead to Jannah, do you go and go and search for another route? Let me try this one. It might get you to take you to the ditch. Take you to the hellfire. Take the one which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said to us, he's pleased. وَلَئِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا Allah Jalla he said, if they to believe in what you believers had believed in, they've been guided. And who are these believers at the time of the Prophet of Allah, whom Allah is saying that if the, the kuffar believes in what those believers had believed in, then they've got guidance. Who are these believers? Sahaba. When the companions were the Prophet of Allah, they are the only ones whom are being addressed by this ayah when it was revealed. Nobody else. So those are the Sahaba. وَمَنْ يُشَقِّقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيْنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى And he who does oppose the Messenger of Allah after guidance was shown to him. وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And follow other than the path of the believers. Who are these believers whom Allah is talking about? And follow other than the path of the believers. When this ayah was revealed, what? You were there? You were not there. It was the Sahaba, companions, predecessors, Salaf. That's the word, salaf, the predecessors were there. So Allah Azza wa said, he who opposes the messenger of Allah, after guidance was shown to him, and follow other than the path of the believers. So here, he did not, Allah Azza wa stop by saying, الْهُدَى He didn't stop here, but he added this element which is important. And he follows other than the path of the believer. Then, نُوَلِّهِ مَتَوَلَّى we will put him in the path that he chosen. And in this dunya, he will be punished. The year after he will be in hell. We'll put him in the path he chosen in this dunya. It's going to be whatever he chose. But in the year after, you're going to get hell. So listen, Ya Khwari. This ayah is very important. Allah could have said, which translates very well, meaning 100, sound 100%. He who opposes the messenger of Allah after guidance was shown to him, after you have reached, reached to you the proofs and all of that, then Allah will put you in the path you chose and Allah will put you in hell, in the hell, in the hereafter. Is this sound his meaning? Mashallah, many sounds, like the meaning is 100% sound, true or not? He who goes away from the Prophet, contradicts the Prophet after the proof came to him, then Allah will put him in the path he chose and he will put him in hell in the hereafter. 100%, mashallah. But Allah, he added something there. Not for the sake of extra. No. He said, And he follows other than the path of those believers. Those believers, the Akhwan, companions. Those are the ones whom Allah Azza wa Jal meant in this ayah. And listen, he did not say after guidance was shown to them. Because the path of the believers is a guidance in itself. Listen, when the Prophet ﷺ says something, you can't implement it unless you see how the Sahaba implemented it. Do you understand that? That's why Allah said, after guidance shown to him. So you need to understand the words of the Quran and the words of the Prophet, if they're not being practiced, being put into practice by the companions, I can't really do what I think is correct. Otherwise, I will now make the Quran against the Sunnah, the Sunnah against the Quran, I will follow different religion. I have to follow the Quran and the Sunnah, not according to my understanding of the language only. No, no, no. How the companions understood it. How the companions understood it. Give you a very simple example. You understand this? Then we will start with the topic. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said, "Wasariqu wasariqatu faqtahu aydiyahu." Male and female thieves cut their hands. Now the Quran does not tell us how much needs the thief to steal in order for his hands to be amputated. We don't know that. We go to the Sunnah. Yes. There is no amputation in something stolen which is less than a quarter of a dinar. A quarter of a dinar, dinar is 4.25 grams of gold. A quarter of that is about one gram of something. And these days you could just say it's about 60 pounds. So if it's less than 60 pounds, we don't cut. 
more than 60 pounds, we amputate. Fine. So it's in the Sunnah explained. But where to cut from? Here, cut their hands. The hands in Arabic is from the end of the tip of your middle finger all the way under your arm. Armpit here. That's called hand. So Allah did, he said, male and female thieves cut their hands. We knew now how much, the minimum, where they had to be amputated. Now, but we want to know which is more important, where to cut. From here, from here, from there, from there. Not in the sunnah at all. In the sunnah, there is no explanation for that. It doesn't say to us. The sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. Not a single hadith tells us where to cut from. Now, are we left alone here? Oh, let's just say, if he is brown, we cut from here. If he's white, we cut from here. For example, if he's uh, Arab, we cut small. Not Arab, we cut more. Imagine. So how can we cut? It's important. It's more important than the money. We know that from the Sunnah of the companions, not from the Sunnah of the Prophet. Companions at the time of Umar, he had implemented this amputation with the presence of the companions, all of them, they were having consensus that when he cut, he cut from the wrist. Are you saying to me, why should we go from the wrist? Because these companions, they could be wrong. No, they're not wrong. The companions, Ikhwani, whenever some verses are revealed from the Almighty, prophets of Allah gives them verses, and then he will give them the meaning, and he will also make them to practice. So when this ayah was sent down, the male and the female cut their hands, Prophet of Allah, he must have told them, cut their hands, and he pointed to where? To the wrist. So they took that, and they implemented at the time of Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. Understood that now? So that's why, without the understanding of those Sahaba, we'll end up in not knowing where to cut our hands, or the hands of the thief, if he steals. We don't know. That's why it's important to understand that this third thing that we need to believe in is very important. We believe in Quran. We believe in Sunnah, correct? So Quran and Sunnah, and that's most of the partisans. They belong to Islam. They would say we are on Quran and Sunnah, correct? Yes. But none of them say with the understanding of the Salaf. And that's what you are. You have to understand that this is a very important principle. I'm not going to understand the Quran and the Sunnah according to my partisan, according to my language, according to the people I live with, according to what I see that Sheikh has implemented. No. With the mechanism of understanding the Quran or the Sunnah, with those called companions. Somebody might say, well, the companions, they differ. Well, we differ according to the difference. So if these companions had chosen two opinions and we don't have a proof to support one of them, our differences has to be amongst the one that difference. I'll give you a very important example. Salah. The one who denies the salah out of just denial, he's kafir with all consensus. But if he doesn't pray out of laziness, we have a difference amongst the companions themselves. Some of them they say they're what? He's a disbeliever. And some of them they said what? He is a believer, but he is a criminal. Difference amongst them. Now, so the people who are after them, like us, we cannot say a third difference. So some of the you know, scholars, they say, like in Saudi Arabia, they say most of them, he's what? A disbeliever. If he left the prayers, because they, 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 they follow a certain madhab, and they believe that he is a disbeliever. Whereas the majority of the scholars, they say he is a believer, but he is a criminal. By the way, is this on? By the way, funny. These are on. I could, I could hear them without even. We have to switch off all of this. This one and that one. Yeah, it's on. It's on. I could see that. Feedback straight away. Five. So, the here we find. Subhanallah. I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying, Ashir? Right, the Salah. So the person who does not pray out of laziness is a difference among the scholars because there is a difference among the Sahaba. We don't introduce a third difference. So we are like this or like that. Yes, we think 
we take one opinion we think is correct. But when we say the other opinion is incorrect, we don't say they are jahil, they are mubtadi'a, because they have a valid difference among the scholars of the Sahaba as well. Now we're coming to the book I'm going to be explaining from. It's called Limada Ikhtartu Al Manhaj al Salafi. Why I have chosen, why I chose to be a Salafi. This is the book I'm going to be explaining. I'm going to add in as well things as well to it. Okay. So you could, if you are an Arab, you could really Google it out. Just put Limad Akhtartu Al Manhaj al Salafi. Salim ibn Eid Hilali. If you're not an Arab, I don't think there's a translation. Uh, you don't need, Ya Ikhwani, you don't need, if you haven't got the English one, to have it. If you got your notes, you'll write a lot. Ikhwani, Al-Ummah Al-Islamiyah, at the moment, they are living in a turmoil. We have people, because of the media, at the moment it's spreading, we have lots of people who are saying to you, come, I am on the correct manhaj. So we find that the Muslims these days are losing ground to the enemies. Some of these places which were in the hands of the Muslims, they've gone away. They've been taken by the enemies. The reason behind this is that the people are not abiding by the correct methodology that the Prophet ﷺ left us upon. And we are, as Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anh had said, when Umar al-Khattab, he was meeting people from the Christians, and they were people who are comrades, commanders, very elite people, he met them by stepping down from his camp, and he was normal, you know, shirwal and kamis, and his shoes was taken because he was in the mud. He put them underneath his arm. And imagine this is a khalifa. <laughs> this is a khalifa. His arm. So Abu Ubaida, Amr ibn Abil Jarrah, he says, Ya Amir al Mu'mini, O oh, leader of the believers, for verily, you do this and you are the khalifa. I don't like these people to see you in this state. You know, those who are elite. I don't want them to see you like this and like a normal person with your shoes like this. You are the president. You are the khalifa. He said, oh, yeah, boy, but I wish somebody else had said it. I would have really beaten you up. If it's somebody else, I would have beaten you up. But it's because you are a you know, companion, respectable. He said, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ أَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ we are people whom Allah gave us the triumph and the honor by Islam, not by prestige and mount and all of that. If you choose to be triumphed and with honor by other than the Islam, then you're going to get humiliated. Allah will put you down. And this is a saying our Sheikh Al-Azban used to say it a lot. Sheikh al used to say this saying most of the time. And this, I think, he had taken it from the Sheikh Rahmatullahi Ali. طيب. Now, we know that, alhamdulillah, in, we look into the history, we have ups and downs. There is ups and downs. There's no, there's no any doubt about that. So how can we, when we are in the downs, phases how can we lift ourselves up how definitely by understanding our situation from the perspective of the quran and the sunnah nothing else so what is the current situation of this ummah and what is the sayings of the prophet ﷺ that told us about what's going to take place and how should we prepare ourselves when we are in such situation now, first thing we're going to understand is that what the Prophet of Allah described, state of weakness. Weak. We're going to understand how the Prophet of Allah diagnosed that disease and also how the Prophet gave us how to cure ourselves. 
what is the remedy? Kwani, can, can I just ask for this? It's really hot. Put it down. You were putting two, mashallah. You're really very good. Just put it down. I mean, you're, you're not, you're, the temperature is really hot, especially when we're together. The hadith that we're going to be discussing. Zakallah. Hadith Thawban. When you put this down, I said, where is the sound coming from again? I thought you put, did you put off one and switch another one? Oh, the both one. See, right. Inshallah, with this topic, you're going to be getting really extra hot. Hadith Thawban and Thawban, he was a servant, slave who had been set free by the Prophet. Mawla Rasulullah. Prophet of Allah. He said, he said, the Prophet of Allah said, Tawban, Yushiku an tada'a alaykum al-umam kama tada'a al-akalatu ila qas'atiha. Kwan, you have to memorize this hadith. Very important hadith. Because this is the hadith that tells us where is the wrong and how to treat that wrong. Yushiku an tada'a alaykum al-umam. The nations are drawing close from all over the globe. From all over the corners of the world, you should. And the Prophet of Allah is telling us something that's going to take place later on, which took place already. You will see. All these nations who are non Muslim are about to come to you. Like those who are starving people when they come to an, a, a, a platter of food. Some starving people see a platter of food, what are they going to do? Everybody wants to, to take, where's my share? Where's my share? Where's my share? Platter of food. قال, قال قائل, a person who's from the companion asked, and he's clever. Is it because we are few in number, Messenger of Allah, that these people will come because we can't defend ourselves, because manpower is not there? He said, No, Walantum Yawma Idin Kathir. You are too many. SubhanAllah. Prophet Allah is seeing us. Too many. There's no other religion have. Followers more than the Islam. Do you know that? Do you know that? We have two billions or more. Two billions. There's no other religion on the face of the earth that have followers like the Muslim. And it's the fastest growing religion by the confession of those who are not Muslims. That's why they're worried. So he said, You're too many, but you are Ghutha. Ghutha means the froth is on the sea. They call it sea foam as well. Okay. Like the foam of the sea or the, the water. And then Prophet Allah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to remove that fear from the hearts of your enemy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to throw into your heart al -wahm. So the companions, they ask, what is Al-Wahn? What is Al-Wahn? Now Al-Wahn, they know it in Arabic language, it means weakness. But what is weakness here? Weakness of what? So he said, dunya wa karahiyatul maut. This is the Wahn. This is the Ba'af. This is the disease. And that is, Hubbud dunya, you love this world. Karahiyatul maut, you hate to death. Wallahi and by Allah. Today I was on the phone with somebody who is supposed to be a very close relative of mine, but he's been taken far away from the religion. Subhanallah. He's now above his 80s, doesn't pray. Not only that, worse than that, ideologies into him. May Allah save him, ya You know what he said? This reminds me of this hadith. He said, Death is my enemy. Death is a criminal. That's what he said. Yeah, it could be sounded in his mind. Yeah, he's sound. He's an engineer. What are you? Subhanallah. His death is my enemy. I'm, death is a criminal. I'm going to fight him. So these people, subhanallah, how they are in illusion all their life. This is illusion. Wallah. How? How are you going to be fighting the death? How? You think you're going to be living forever? Like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about these people who are going to be living forever? Then death is not going to come to them? Allah. So this hadith 
basically diagnoses the disease of this ummah. Let's talk about it in detail so you understand how the Prophet of Allah had diagnosed with words that have meanings. He didn't just say the froth of the sea, the foam of the sea. No, every single word carries a meaning. But the scholars, when they look at the hadith, they don't look at it like us. No, they start rotating the hadith and getting extracting uh, so many benefits. Ibn al Qas, one of the scholars of the hadith, those who are the people from the fiqh, they said that al hadith, they don't know how to extract benefits. Al Muhaddithun can't extract benefits from the hadith. It's only the al fiqh, the ones who are fiqh understanding. So Ibn al Qas, he said, okay, he made them a treatise from the hadith of the Prophet of Allah. Ya Aba Umayr, Mada Fa'al and Noir. This is the son of Um Sulaim, whom he died with a child. And he had a bird who was in the cage. And the Prophet Allah paid them a visit in their house. And he prayed in their house. And then he wanted to cuddle the child of Umayr. He said to him, Ya Aba Umayr, what Abu Mada Fa'al and Noir? Noir is a small bird. What did he do? He's cuddling him. Ibn al Qas extracted from that small hadith 80 benefits. Just to show al fiqh. No, 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 we can't extract it from benefits. And Imam al Hafid al Hajar, he made them up to more than 100. More than 100. One of them is you're allowed to cage the bird. SubhanAllah, to lock the bird. It's allowed. Okay, one of these benefits. Nobody think about it. To lock the bird. To cage the bird, as long as you feed him. Fine. So the hadith here we're going to extract from this number one that the enemies of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, from the soldiers of Iblis, the Shaytan, may Allah curse them, they are all the time awaiting for the moment when they can really attack. Why? Because the Ummah is weak. And the disease is there. So this is not just now. This is from the moment when Muhammad وسلم, he came with his prophethood and his this religion of Islam, which has been from the beginning, of course, but when he came with the Sharia. From that moment, and all the time, the plot from the Kuffar. Not only from the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, from Nuh alayhi salam, when he was face by face, the kuffar, all of them. What this kuffar did to Musa, alayhi salam. Plotting against him. What the kuffar did to Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Plotting against him. What the prophet did to each prophet. We have a story. Now, from the time of the prophet, وسلم, we have a story of those three people who were left behind in the battle of Tabuk. Prophet Allah asked everybody to go up to Tabuk. And three companions, along with the hypocrites, they stayed behind for no reason. Hypocrites, they made an excuse. They're liars. But those three did not give an excuse. When the Prophet went back after 22 nights, he went to the masjid. Munafiqun gave him an excuse. And he said, okay, I'll give, I'll let Allah Azza wa Jal tackle your inside what you've hidden. Accepted their apology. And these are liars, right? Except for three. Those three, one of them, Skab ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu. He said, they said, well, we don't have an excuse. So the Prophet said, okay, these people have been truthful. We're not allowed to talk to them. Ikhwani stayed for a long time, 50 nights. Nobody took to them. Nobody, even the cousin, the cousin Abu Qatada of uh, Kabul Malik, he doesn't talk to him. Even Kabul Malik, he said, you know that I love the Prophet of Allah. He said, no, I don't know. Because when he says, Salaamu Alaikum, he can't say to Alaikum Salaam. When he passes by the Prophet, he says, Salaamu Alaikum. He sees the movement in the lips of the Prophet. Does he say, Walaikum salam or not? Allahu alam. He said that even the earth, I'm going on top of it, it's not my earth. It's not my land. I'm living somewhere else. He became a stranger. Whole community abided with what the Prophet of Allah said. Boycott me. Nobody talk to them. Until Allah rules and gives judgment. 50 nights. Nobody speaking to them. Imagine. Your own cousin to speak. Even in the last 10 nights, Allah's messenger commanded for their wives to detach them. So the messenger came, the one who was Prophet Allah sent to the three of them. One of them he said, that messenger he said to Kaab, that Prophet of Allah he said, detach yourself from your wife. He said, shall I divorce her? He said his command, whatever he wants. Shall I divorce her? He said, no, no, no. But you're not allowed to 
You have to send her back to her, to her family. You can't, you know, communicate with her. So he's going to be on his own. So he sent her. The other two men, because they're too old, the two old, they've asked for, you know, uh, help. So that the wives will help them. They're too old. So they've asked. They could nurse them and everything. Prophet of Allah, he said, no problem as long as they don't touch them. One of the wives, he said, touch him what? He, he can't, nothing is moving in him in terms of intimacy. There's nothing moving in him. An old man. So he accepted. Now, some of the family of Kaab ibn Malik, they said to him, well, don't you just say, you know, an excuse that you can be a wife with. No way I'm going to be what? Lying to the Prophet and then Allah Azza wa Jal will disclose that to the Prophet by revelation. Allahu Akbar. Now, during those 59s, look at these kuffar, disbelievers. They be gathering intelligence. They knew who are these people being boycotted. And the stronger out of them is Kaab ibn Malik. Young youth. They sent him a letter by a person was in this hadith called Nabati. Nabati is like from those people who are like, you know, they works in, in the urban areas. They are Nabati from Nabata, from taking the water out, extracting the water. So this, he had a letter from the king of Ghassan, who belongs to the Christian, the crusade at that time, Christians. He came with a letter specific to whom? To this, from the king. So the Nabati, he was asking in the market, who can tell me where is Kaab? So they told him, the companions, Kaab is there. So he saw him. He gave him the letter. He said, I was a scribe. I could read and write. So I started reading from the king of Ghassan. Al Ghassan. King is to you, Kaab ibn Malik. We have heard that your friend, which is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your friend had deserted you, left you. Come to us, we will give you. Look at this. Come to us, we will honor you. Give you the money, we'll give you the fame, we'll give you the rank, we'll give you the position. Not to us. What I'm just saying to you here, look, look how the enemies, they were gathering intelligence to know what happening within the Islamic State when it was in its power at that time. They got power. But yet, they don't stop plotting, just like until today. So, this is the first thing, that the enemies of Allah are waiting. In this hadith, yes, when the uh, Islamic Ummah goes weaker, they come to it from all over the place. This is my ship. This is my ship. Second thing, that they're calling one another. So, guys, come. You see, the Muslim country is weak. They're a sick man. And then the what they call, you know, the enemies of all they call the Ummah, Muslim, Muslim Ummah, they're uh, sick men. We are the sick, Rajul Marid, the sick men. Like the Japanese used to call the China the sick men. Call us the soul, the sick man, we're sick, ill, weak. Come, come, come. So when you look at the crusades, huh, you will see. Okay, well, read by yourself the First World War. What was it all about as well? It's not about just Austria. It's about the Ottoman. How these people used to plot people inside there, the Muslim world. In order to make them to make a against a coup against the Ottoman Empire. How? First World War. Person who's clever, he knows what I'm talking about. Thirdly, from this hadith, that when the Prophet of Allah he said that the whole Ummah comes to this whole kuffar, this belief that come from all over the direction to this Ummah, that means this Ummah has got sources of what? Power. They've got wealth, they've got petrol, fuel, they've got gold, they've got lots of things. That's why I don't think these people are going to go, for example, to some countries who've got no power, nothing. They're going to waste you know, their soldiers and, and killing you know, just for the sake of nothing. They know that there is a source of treasure there. So the ummah is full of treasures. That's hadith is telling us. So Prophet Allah gave the description is that these people, they come from all directions. To this ummah, the trying each one is, this is my share, this is my piece of cake. Just like people who are starving, they come into a platter of food. Each one says, this is mine, this is mine. Each one, he wants to share of the lion. Another issue as well. The disbelievers that they have taken the treasures of this ummah. They've stolen it. Also, that they have 
the disbelievers made these countries, the Muslims, into small provinces. They have divided. They call it something a divide, conquer, and rule. Yes. That's a, there's something. They divide them into ethnicity. ethnicity or they divide them in provinces, in divide in color, divide them in language. Small places. So they could uh, divide and rule. Now, Prophet Sallam told us about this. He said, you are going to be uh, provinces, each one has his own followers and people who are championing them. Prophet Allah, he said, they will be in Sham, he had Sham, Levante, and some in Iraq. By the way, the north of Iraq is part of the Levante, and some in Yemen. So, this person called Abdullah ibn Hawar is a messenger of Allah. Which one, if I to live, to go with, to follow? He said, Alaykum bi Sham, go to the Levante. The ones who are, this is the one. He who does not want to and refuses, let him go to the Yemen. And let him take from his own water, not from somebody else's water. For Allah Azza wa Jal, he had given us the protection. He gave his protection to the people of Sham, to the land of the Levante. Abu Idris al-Khawlani, who is a person who had witnessed the companions and witnessed also the followers. We call him a Mukhabram. Um, he lived to see the time of the Prophet, but he, was, he did not see the Prophet, so he doesn't make him a companion. He says, if Allah Azza wa Jal puts something in his custody, then he will not neglect him. He will always look after him, which is Bilal Shami means. So we could see from this hadith exactly what is happening to our Muslim countries. Arab world, 22 countries. Muslim world, God knows how many countries <laughs> divided. And even the Muslim country itself is divided. North, south, look at Libya now. North of Libya, part of Libya. Allah al -Musta'an. Look at Somal now. Sharq al Suman, Somali. Dividing it. Look. Allah al -Musta'an. Also, this hadith tells us that this ummah will not have the respect and the fear and the hearts of the enemies like before. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, سَنُلْقِي فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الرُّحْبَ We will throw into the hearts of the disbelievers the fear. بِمَا أَشْرَكُوا بِاللَّهِ Why? Because they were associating things and deities with the Almighty. مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا Which Allah did not give authority of. Prophet ﷺ, he said, نُصِرْتُ بِالرُّعْبِ مَسِيرَةَ شَهْرٍ I have been given the victory. Of a distance of a month. That means the enemies, if I hear about me coming to him, a month distance in terms of walking or mount, he will be scared. So as soon as the Prophet of Allah's news be reaching the enemies of a distance of a month, that's a lot, then they will be ter terrified because of the Muslim power. So here, Prophet of Allah, he said, وَلَيَنْزِعَنَّ اللَّهُ مِنْ صُدُورِ عَدُوِّكُمُ لَهَابَةً مِنْكُمْ Allah Azza wa will remove that fear from the hearts of your enemies regarding yourself, regarding the ummah. So these now disbelievers, look at them, what they're doing, killing. Look what is happening in Palestine, in Gaza, killing. Every single person, whether he is a Muslim or not a Muslim, he's got common sense, he knows this is a genocide. More than 50,000 being killed, Ikhwani. This is a realistic number, but it's more than that. More than 120,000 maybe injured. Even the non-Muslims, you know. If you go to uh, Ireland, they're putting the flag of Palestine in their houses, most of them. Because they know that this is volume, this is oppression. And if, you, if, you, if you're killing 50,000 cats, huh, the animal association will come in and make you know, a prize. 50,000 cats? How dare you? Don't these people who are animal friends, they go and protest and even put bombs into the lab because they're making experiments for what? For rats. It's true or not? Rats, 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 which Prophet ﷺ commanded us to kill them. They carry the disease. Because these people are making experiments on rats to see if they get carry cancer with this and that, they put in bombs in their labs. But these people are not rats, they are human beings. But like how cheap they are. Cheap human beings. That's how they became cheap. Because what the Prophet of Allah he said, there's no fear. 
Lebanon, the south of Lebanon, killing, bombing, nothing. Allah Mustaan. I mean, I have neighbors who are non Muslim. They are with me. They say, well, what, I don't, I don't, what to do? We can't do nothing. But this is what is happening. Also, this hadith tells us that the power elements in this ummah is nothing to do with artilleries nor is man power. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Bal antum yawma kathir. You are too many. Too many. What is the power? Nothing. Too many. Prophet of Allah with the companions in the Battle of Hunayn, when the 10,000 that came from Medina regained Mecca, conquering Mecca, they call it, and then adding to them 2,000 from the ones who just came recently to Islam, one of them is Abu Waqid al Layfi, radiallahu anhu, were heading towards Hunayn just a month after regaining Mecca. Mecca is under the possession of Islam. Two, a month, month and a half, they went to the enemies who are in Hunayn. Not far away. Hunayn is not far away. It's Ta'if. This is the two tribes. When they were 12,000, one of them, they said, it looked. It's not from the senior companions, it's from the new ones. Oh, we will never be defeated because of few number. Allah taught them a lesson that the victory is not because of the number. Yes, you are too many, 12. But Allah gave you victory when you were little, 300. 314. Against triple the number. Allah gave you the victory when you were 3,000 against 200,000. In the battle of what? Mu'tah. 3,000, 200,000. 70. Rishi, 70 to 1. Gave you the victory. This, how is the victory? That these enemies didn't take their chance and kill the Muslims. They were scared. It's a victory. 3,000, 200,000. 3,000 dressed up like me, maybe. Maybe a bit of just helmet here and there. Against... Uh, those who are the, got the latest weapons of that time is shining. You know, it's metal. It's shining. Whenever you go, shining metal, you know. Just like these days as well, the ones who are advanced, or non Muslims, they are so much advanced. They could, he could just, you know, he's got his goggles. He could see everything. We can't see nothing. Like, him. what is all advanced? These people are like this. But yet, they were winners. And that's why. Zayd ibn Arqam radiallahu anhu. He was with Abu Hurairah in that battle. When Abu Hurairah was looking at these big numbers, 200,000, he's got 3,000. Too many. He can't even count the numbers. Too many. He said, are you you're scared? He said to him, yes. He said to him, we don't get the victory because of manpower. We don't. La nunsar bil adad. Couldn't get victory because of the number. We are giving the victory because of the iman. We will do our best to get as much as our trillions as possible. Muslim Ummah, they will never ever be able to catch up in technology with a non-Muslim. You know, you, you know that's a fact. The huge difference between the Muslims and the non-Muslims in terms of artillery, technology. Forget about it. It'll be 500 years, the difference. 500 years. But Allah he says, أَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُ وَأَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُ مِنْ كُونَ Prepare as much as you can. But before this preparation of artilleries, prepare what? The Iman in the heart. This has to be fixed, Ya Khan. So, Allah Azza wa taught them a lesson by giving them the taste of defeat at the beginning. Then Allah gave them the victory. Just to teach them a lesson. Also, that this Ummah is going to come to a point, Prophet said, that there is no wait for it. Nobody care. <laughs> Arabs, Muslims, <laughs> nothing. No power. He described us like this. Like the foam of the sea. The froth on the sea. The sea foam. Have you ever seen the sea foam? Maybe you've seen some of it. You want to see most, a lot of it? There's countries, which I've seen, and the foam is like a cloud. You know, the clouds, clouds. Foam is like a cloud. Well, it's a cloud, a big cloud. Big, massive foam. I've seen, you could Google it, a city was covered by foam. See it? A city and next to the sea, covered by foam. Oh, look at this description from the Prophet of Allah, what it meant, the foam. Foam, number one, 
has appearance. It looks huge, oh, big, but actually it's nothing. You could go there, do like this, any wind will take it out. This is the Ummah. It looks what? Big. But it's what? Weak. Exactly like the foam. That's number one. We learn from this. And the foam looks big, but it, any wind will take it out. And here we are, the Muslim. We look much out. Two billions. But any small little country with power, it defeats us. This is the foam. Number two. The foam, ya ikhwani, carries all dirt. I was reading about the foam. Just today, just to see what is the foam consist of. Algae, bacteria, everything. And this is what the Ummah now carries in between it. Aqaid, which is not Aqaid Sahih. Creeds, ideologies. You have all Ahl al bidah It's inside that foam. Description of the Prophet Thirdly, the foam has no control of itself. It runs with the sea. With the water, the water goes, it goes with it. Same thing with the Ummah. Has no control of itself. Who's running the show? The one who's not Muslims. True or not? Anything which has been said in the United Nations, Muslim world, they've uh, implemented like what? By, by the latter. Uh, we don't have any uh, uh, position to go to say our word in the United Nations. You can shout as much as you want, but nobody's listening. It's true or not? This is the foam. So the foam is under the control of the water and we are under the control of non-Muslims. That's what it is. Exactly as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also Allah said, وَأَمَّا الزَّبَدُ فَيَذْهَبُ جُفَا This foam goes for nothing. No sovereignty, no rule. The foam does not rule. Same thing with this ummah. That's what happened to it. وَالْعِيَادُ billah. Foam doesn't know what is fate. Where is it going to end? Which place is it going to end? Because with the water. Same thing with this ummah. We don't know what's going to happen. Because the ones who are planning is not the Muslims. It is the non-Muslims. Also from this hadith, Prophet Salami said that the people of Muslims will make their target is dunya. A dunya akbaru hamiha. Umamlau ilmiha. That's the dunya. They try now to recruit and teach the candidates, the Muslims, huh? I want them to be the best engineer. Okay. The best pilot. Okay. How many people who wants his son to be the best of hathos, the best of faqih? We have the opposite. If the father saw his son go to that faculty, it's not going to feed you. You're not going to eat. You're going to live on air. Throw not. It doesn't pay you money, Akhi. Doctor gives you a lot. And that's why the children, they'll go to somebody, what is the most paying job? You want to study to get the most paying job. Allah al -Mustan. He doesn't know that he's actually making ikhlas for his dunya, not for the akhirah. We want people, just as much as they're keen to teach their children to go to be engineers and pilots, we want them to teach them to be scholars. And here I mean scholars, proper scholars. Not those who you know, some studies, they call it uh, Alim course. Uh, I call it Jahil course. After Alim course, still Jahil. And he thinks he's Alim. And he takes Alim course for two, three years, and he's still Jahil. And he thinks he's Alim, Akhi, Alim. This is Alima, Alima course. MashaAllah, Alima. Three years becomes Alima. Allah, <laughs> this is why you find an image of 50 scholars, of says 50 scholars amongst them. Allah, Mustan. Allah, Mustan, ya akhwani. Alim course. Alim to be an alim. <laughs> this is years of your life dedicated. It's not three years you get, uh, you know, like a you know, promotion, like an army you know, promotion, lieutenant colonel. <laughs> so the uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr al-As, إِذَا فُتِحَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ فَارِسُ وَالرُّمْ أَيُّ قَوْمٍ أَنْتُمْ If you to have the power to gain Persia, Persian Empire and the Roman Byzantine Empire. You are the one in control now. What type of people are you going to be? So he answered the question. Abdullah ibn Amr al-As said, Messenger of Allah. Sorry, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, he said, We will be 
as what Allah commanded us. That means we will not be extravagant. We will do what Allah commanded us. He said, say something else, Ya Abdurrahman Awful. Other than that, what are you talking about? You will be competing with another. Which one is going to be the richest? You're going to be envying one another because this one has got more than you. You're going to be hating one another. You're going to be giving the back to one another. You're going to be coming to the dwellings of these Muhajirun immigrants and you're going to be making the sword of yours against one another. SubhanAllah. You're going to be fighting. This is what, when the dunya opens onto us, that's what happens. We're not going to appreciate and give what Allah commanded us to give from the chariot, from the charity of the zakah. No. So that's why when at the time of Umar Khattab, عنه, he had gained the power and the victory over the Persian Empire, he started to cry. Why he started to cry? Because he said that if this takes place in any place or any people, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the enmity of those people amongst each other. That means your power will not be against the enemies or the outsiders, but will be in between you against one another. You started to cry. Because of the Prophet of Allah, he said, if Persian Empire and the Byzantine Empire to be ruled by yourself and you gain the victory, you're going to be competing, and envying, grudge, and you will be as well hating one another, fighting one another. Right. There is another thing which is here is very important to learn. This is the last thing. That all with this, alhamdulillah, there is something guaranteed for us. Alhamdulillah. We're not going to be like the people of Ad who finished. People of Thamud who finished. The people of uh, the time of Musa said, who finished. No, we're going to be alhamdulillah staying. And that's a promise. This hadith, Prophet he said, Inna Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal had folded for me the earth. You know, these days we could really imagine this. At the time of the Prophet, maybe you know. I mean, now we could see the earth and you know in a in a laptop. Could see the earth like you know, I could see the whole earth, yeah, you know, like a, 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 a sphere or a ball in front of me. But at the time of the Prophet, he doesn't know the maps and all of this. He says, Inna Allah Azza wa Jal. That means I could really see with my own eyes the end of the globe. Qal faraitu I have seen as far as I came from the east and as far as I can see from the west. Wa inna Allah, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given me ma yalina. That means my ummah will have the dominion, the sovereignty for much as much as what I have seen. Scholars, they said, look here. Prophet of Allah, what did he see? East and west, correct? And that's why Islam expanded east and west. But north and south, See that? SubhanAllah. East as far as China, Islam. And west as far as Morocco. But north, no, no, Russia, South African, Ghana, and all of these countries, which are non Muslim countries. So it stretched exactly what the Prophet said East and West. Whatever has been folded to me, my Ummah's dominion will reach that. Then he said, and also have been given the treasures of the Persian Empire and the Byzantine Empire, which took place. And I asked my Ummah, I, so I asked my Lord for my Ummah, the following. That is, Allah does not doom this Ummah by famine or drought like he had done to the people of the time of Fir'aun or the time of Yusuf alayhi salam. So he did not to drown, to kill them through a famine. Yes, famine takes place in some of the countries, but not in all the Muslim countries. Something that will take the Muslim ummah out, that will never happen. And also the Prophet Sallallahu he asked, Allah yusallit alayha aduwan min ghayriha. That no, Allah will not put an enemy from outside the Muslim ummah, فَيَسْتَبِيحَ بَيْضَتَهُمْ That he will make them to be wiped out. He will be able to uproot them. Okay? So there is no famine going to kill us. And no outside enemy is going to uproot us. It's only us. So Allah Azza wa replied back to me. And he said, Oh Muhammad, I've given you that promise. No famine will kill you as an Ummah Muhammad. And I will not impose an enemy from the outside to uproot you. And then he said, 
ولو اجتمع من باقطارها الله يسايز ايفن اف اول ذوز اس بليفرز كم فروم اول اوفر ذا كورنرز تو ابريت يو كيل يو اول اذا ويل نوت بي ايبل تو دو سو until hatta yakuna ba'dhum yuhliku ba'd until one of you muslims kill one another than muslims you are the ones who are going to be killing one another wa yasbi ba'dhum ba'd and you uh, you're going to be as well taking the war booty from each other another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said sa'altu rabbi thalatan i have asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala three things one of them the famine drought the other one drown my allah will not drown my ummah he gave me two which is the drowning not going to be drowned like people of firaun and not going to be as well famine and going to kill us قال والثالثة منعنيها الله did not give me the third one what is the third one that ان يجعل بأسهم بينهم that is not to put the enmity of the muslims amongst each other Allah did not give me that so the muslim enmity is against one another each country plot against the muslim country huh So you have boycotting of such a Muslim country. We don't find, for example, boycotting boycotting a non-Muslim country. Muslim country boycotting our Muslim country. Ba'sahum or ba'suhum bainahum. So the question is: So if we have this Muslim ummah, okay, is actually being praised by the Almighty, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, an ummah which will not perish. by those things that the Prophet of Allah told us. So what is the thing that makes this uh, this this ummah as the foam of the sea? What is it? What does it make it? This is going to be discussed, inshallah, in the following class. And that is the hadith. We call it hadith of dakhan. Dakhan means not clear, haze, tainted, polluted, adulterated, All these words that can come to the dakhan. Dakhan means smoke. What is the hadith of smoke? This is a hadith of Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiallahu an. The hadith is a mighty hadith in which we will understand why we became the foam, the froth of the sea. This is the reason. And this is how we're going to be tackling those reasons in order not to be what the Prophet talked about. And the Prophet of Allah, wallahi, by looking at this hadith and the hadith which is followed, you will see that he's speaking like he's with us. Why? Because he speaks from divine. Allah told him. Everything that he said is taking place. You're going to follow the people's uh, trend, the fashion of everything, the ones who are before you. Christians and Jews, exactly the same. Shibran bi shibran. Shibran bi shibran. Dira'an bi dira'an. Handspan by handspan. Muslims, they don't know anything about birthdays. We never heard about the Prophet of Allah. Or Abu Bakr setting up a cake on 60 candles there. Happy birthday, Abu Bakr. Well, they blow then on the candles and they make a wish. We don't, we don't know these things. We learn them from where? From the non-Muslims. To such an extent that we go to a Muslim restaurant. Muslim restaurant, which doesn't allow alcohol. And I go to it. There's no music. And I go to it. Suddenly, they put the lights off. And then this music, happy birthday to you. I look, it's a Muslim, Muslim family. It's not a Muslim, Muslim, Muslim family. We should be crying, Ikhwani. Muslim. When I hear this, I want you to do the same thing. I stand up. Akhi, put this off, down. If you're going to put this, I'm going to bring my mouth, my player, I'm going to put, Allahu Akbar. Yes. Same thing like you have made this music, uh, you have made me to listen to this, I'm going to put Quran for you to listen, whether you like it or not. If we have people like this, they will stop with these people. But we say, ah, what shall I do? What shall I do? That's what's going to happen to us. When the people of Israel happen to them, they don't really do, uh, sorry, forbid the evil when it takes place. And this is some of them, ah, what should I do? I mean, I'm not going to do nothing. Saying like this, this is going to happen to us, we'll be doomed. You just say it, you just say it. I'm not saying it to go and, like, for example, impose with the force or uh, violence. No, no, no. Like this person, he was, and that's a true story, he was in the uh, in a bus, okay? A Muslim bus, a Muslim country. I, I know this person, it's crazy. So he told, the, uh, he told me, take the music off. Take the music off, stop it. The driver, you know, the driver's there, 
They do, do two things there, smoke and music, smoke and music. So he warned him. You know what he did? With his knife, he took the speaker up. Take your speaker. No, you don't do that. <laughs> he just ripped it off from his face like that. His brother, he, he gave it to the driver. <laughs> Yalla, no music now, no speaker. You, you, know, you know that this is in a Muslim country. Non-Muslim countries, they will not, the non-Muslim impose upon you something that you don't want to listen. The non-Muslim, they will respect that. They will not put music loud. Yes, you go into a dance club. I mean, you go into the music because you want them to go to the dance club. But you are in a restaurant or something to put something loud and pose upon you. They don't do that. They don't. Most of them they do. You don't want to come here, go out. Leave. Subhanallah. Uh, in our Muslim countries, and there's a, a relative of mine, uh, she's a sister, relative of mine, she's saying, you know, the country there had made tourism, which is from the inside, to be revived. So they made them to hire a coach to go to such and such city, about 300 miles, and come back and spend the night and have food, okay? All of that for as little as 30 pounds, including food, hotel, and the government's paying to help the tourism inside the, okay, inside in the country. So she said to me, now, we hate it when English or, you know, when foreigners come inside the bus. So why? They just stop us from dancing and making music. <laughs> do you understand me? We can't do nothing. We have to be quiet. We can't be quiet. We have to, you know, put music and dance. And then the ones who are, they come inside, shh, no sound. Subhanallah. Look at this. They don't want this. You want to go out, but not in the bus, not with the coach. So they they were really like, we're like zombies inside the bus. Subhanallah. So this is the this is this is the, the correct and this is wrong. Look, look at this. Allahul Mustaan, ikhwan. Every time I used to have transport from my city where they didn't have a car, can't afford a car, I had to have a fight going, fight coming. Fight going or fight coming. So when it's really absolutely cold and really cold outside. And somebody smoking cigarettes. Akhi, put the cigarettes. Akhi, driver, put the cigarettes off. Okay, I'll pull open the window fully. And people, ah, cold, cold. I don't care, cold or cold. You're killing me. A fight going, a fight coming. Wallahi, a fight going all the morning, fight coming back in the evening. The cigarettes is killing me. Here, do they smoke? No, they're not allowed. It's not allowed in any restaurant. And you'll find the ones who are outside smoking are the Muslims. Look at them, the Muslims smoking outside. They're smoking even next to the door. So you know, the door opens. Yesterday we were in a restaurant. We could smell the ganja, Sheesh, the dope, because he's smoking outside. So I said to the brother, "Please, can you close the door, please? <laughs> close the door because we're smelling ganja." I mean, they're not allowed to, to, to smoke inside, but it's smoking what? just next to the door. Oh shit! This country, the, England, is well, well advanced. Even more advanced, more than the other European countries. The European other countries are like Romania, the same like us. Same like us with the smoking cigarettes. Here, they, are, you know, they respect. Can't really. Your freedom, if it's going to go over my freedom, no, it's not a freedom here. So, alhamdulillah. But right. by this, we'll stop. I've got five minutes of questions, and then we will start with the prayer of the Iran the Aisha. Right. If you have questions, why do you? Allah khairan. MashaAllah, we've got. Plenty here. Of, any person as well from the online want to have a question, please. Let's just focus the question on the manhaj, methodology. Fadalia Faisal. I don't have anybody here, so you could go ahead. Yalla. Okay, let me just uh, give you. I don't know where is Ahmad here. Uh, Ahmad here. Ahmad, 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 yes. Make a co host. Run. Uh, give them permission, please, yeah, Ahmad. Fadal. Yeah, Sheikh, mine wasn't on topic though. Oh, uh, no, no, it has to be on topic. Yalla, Shah, ma'am. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Shah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu When it comes to the issue of giving talks at Masjid of Ahlu Bid'ah, is it true that uh, we are allowed to as long as it's just us, meaning we don't have to sit in a panel, or as long as the Masjid is bringing various speakers from different minat? Menhaj, we're not allowed to go and speak at that masjid. Barakallahu feek. 
Well, this question, it cannot be just uh, addressed like simple no, no or yes. This depends upon the person who is going to make the da'wah in a masjid which is well known for the bid'ah. Now, if he's going to be talking about truthfulness and how to be kind and how to go to be neighbors, don't go there, Rahim. This is not the place where you're going to be putting these things because you're going to deceive other people to come to such a place, which is a place of innovation, to listen to the dua of balalah, of misguidance, because you went there yourself. But if you're going to go there and you tell them, I'm going to talk about the deviance of your creed, they're not going to let you. They're not going to let you. I'm going to talk about the innovations of all the methodologies except the methodology of Ahlus Salam. They're going to let you. They're not going to let you. They're only going to let you talk about truthfulness, kindness, patience, nothing to do with the aqidah. Ah. So, no. If they let me to talk about the aqidah, then I will do it. I will go. I will. You know, it's, like, it's like you are throwing a bomb. It's a halal bomb here. Explosion. It's an explosion. He said, this masjid, did I expect such a talk? I think they're going to pull out the microphone away from you straight away. So I'll talk about my manhaj, go. But if you're going to talk about something else, Prophet of Allah, he went to the Jewish house, with a Jewish boy, he used to be a servant, serving the Prophet of Allah, and he was about to die. He went to see him before his death. What to say to him? Good boy? No. Aslim. Aslim. Embrace Islam. The boy looked at his father. So his father he said, Ata Abal Qasim. SubhanAllah. Adhere to the command of Abul Qasim. When they say Abul Qasim, they respect the Prophet. This Jewish father of his, he himself did not embrace Islam. But he knows Islam is haq. He's telling his son, Come on, embrace Islam. Look at that. They know he's the Prophet. So he embraced Islam and the Prophet of Allah. He was so happy. When his boy died, he said, uh, give him a, a burial. Alhamdulillah, Praise be to Allah that Allah saved him from the fire. He's a Muslim. Can be better than a Muslim from one word. Why? The Prophet of Allah, he went there to give him that word. So if you go into a person who's dying who's a non-Muslim, if you're going to tell him about Islam, go ahead, Akhi. Don't hesitate. Prophet ﷺ used to associate himself with non-Muslim. Didn't he was invited by the Jewish lady? She's the one who put poison for him. He was invited, then he went there. And he went, he ate, had eaten from her food. It was halal, because the, the Jewish, they slaughtered at that time. There was no such thing as called electric. Huh? There was no such thing called gas suffocation. And he had eaten from the Jews. And he had eaten as well from the food, which can be not 100% halal, because the Jews are known for the, well, the riba. So it could be that she was from part of that riba. From that. So people ask me, can I eat? Because it could be a riba. It's not all the money of that disbeliever is haram. Some of it haram. But if you know that he only goes from gambling, you don't go. Even if he's a Muslim, you don't go to him. You don't eat from him. But with mixture, no problem. Prophet Salaam, he went there. He wanted to make some sort of friends with them. But what they did, they plotted to kill him. By the way, Zainab, she embraced Islam. This woman who had put the poison of her, she embraced Islam. Right. Any other questions? Can I ask a question? Akhi, brother, my dear. Hello. You go make, a, you make wudu, brother. You slept. Yeah, you make wudu, inshallah. Because we're going to make the isha prayer. Yeah. You're in a big sleep, mashallah. Even with my loud voice. Tada. Yes. What do you like? Which, which music do you like? <laughs> I know in Islam, generally, music is actually not um, accepted in Islam. But when it comes to, like, anoshi, is it accepted? Okay. Music, akhi, you understand the anoshi than the music. Music is the instruments that makes music. You know, the, the piano, so not to Okay? Uh, let me just actually answer the question. You're just jumping. I haven't really finished that. To ask the question, you have to wait. So the music is instruments. Whether it is somebody's singing with it or not singing with it, that music is haram. Save one instrument, and that is the tambourine. You know the tambourine? The luf. Massive thing. Okay, that's called the tambourine. Without the, the bangles. Sorry, just the tambourine. That's halal. Halal during the time of weddings and the time of eight. As for the nasheed, which is without instruments, 
it is halal but with condition that the words are being said have to be halal words not words of flirting girls and all of that also they are not made with music and then the music taken away Do you know what i'm saying these days they make the sheet put music actually and they are doing with the same fa so le ma exactly the same then with their filterization they take the music off and they leave what the sound and you see the sound you hear it it's like music and even they make with their sounds music ah you know that at the background you know you know the background and the worst thing is when they put ha hu hi behind somebody's talking islamically sheikh al albani ha hu hi behind him wallahi sheikh al mathamin ha hu hi behind him so the people are not affected by the words of the sheikh they're affected by the one ha hu hi somebody sent me a clip of mine and it was sent because the, the uh, to the Luton Center because I'm the trustee there I said what did down akhi the people are not listening to me they listen to oh you wallah people are affected by the uh, we call it the effects effects al muathirat sawti not by the words subhanallah that's what is happening and the quran is going to be like this people singing the quran just like he the like flute as the prophet of allah he said no heart into it just music wallahu ta'ala alam and i'm sorry for the rest of the brothers because we have to do the prayer we have our three minutes succeeded inshallah we'll see you next this class is very important quite for you all of you because we're going to go into principles of this adawa salafiyah we're going to go to the hadiths which talks about the sects and all of that very educative class and remember even that you are upon the salafi you need to as well revive and remember rehearse as well and learn your foundation is important this is very important class as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuwalikum tabata ala dinik wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin